Hola, you amazing artists, and welcome to the mess that is the studio. Art, 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 art. I thought we were doing sea lion intro. Sea what? Our art exhibition is in about eight days, and right now, Clee and I are balls to the wall. This quick video is going to be about what it is that Clee and I are thinking about as we're approaching the show. Like I said, it's eight days away, and this is quite honestly one of the quickest shows, full exhibitions, that Clee and I have thrown together. So in one of the last videos that I posted, I talked about promoting your show and promoting your show is number one. One of the first things you're gonna wanna do is think about the theme of your show, right? So like you're going to think about all the lingo, all the stuff that it is that you're gonna put together for this show. So that's why I think that promoting any kind of event that you do is very important because it organizes your thoughts. It gets your thoughts all organized and that way you know what it is that you're doing. It gives you a little bit more of a sense of direction. I think our weird, awkward promotion was super on brand for, hi, we're new here. Yeah. It worked. By the way, that's a great theme for the show, hi, we're new here. I love it. It's very, very uh, kitchen sink. We're able to show whatever it is that we want. Indeed. One of the things to keep in mind when you're putting together an art exhibition is there are several ways that this could go about. Either A, you're putting together an art exhibition with a gallery and they're the ones that are pretty much in charge of putting the exhibition on, or you are partnering with a gallery or a business and you're putting on an exhibition and maybe they take on half of the cost and you take on the other half or some kind of deal that way, or you are leasing a gallery and then you're pretty much in charge of all the things that happen in within this show. So I've done just about every single variation of art show that you could do, whether it's a gallery that's putting on the show and they're in charge of everything, or it's just you putting on the show and you're in charge of everything. They all have their benefits and they all have their drawbacks. The benefit of let's say leasing a space or you know, if you talk to the owner and the owner is like, sure, you could have your art show in my abandoned space, all the sales are gonna go through you. So that's what I'm gonna talk about in this one because it's where the artist does take on most of the responsibility. So there are a few things that you're gonna to wanna to think about. And getting ready to promote your show is important because that's where a lot of the ideas are gonna come in. That's where the brainstorming comes in of exactly how this show is gonna be, how it's gonna work out, what the lingo is, how you're gonna describe this show you basically want to really think about what the theme of your show is. For Clee and I, because we don't really have a lot of time to put this show together, our theme is pretty much the kitchen sink. It is a retrospective of everything that either we've done, that we haven't done, things that we've never shown before. At this rate, I'm gonna be showing a lot of work that I haven't done. That was, that was, <laughs> I didn't mean to say things we have, that doesn't even make, well, maybe invisible sculptures. <laughs> Those are things or I haven't done. Half-finished works? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Half-finished works. Things that I haven't done. <laughs> Basically everything. It's music. It's book writing. It's art. It's jewelry. It's antics. Live streams. All that kind of stuff is going to happen at our show. The next thing you're going to want to think about is logistics and organization. The organization of the show, right? So you're going to want to get into the space. You're going to want to figure out exactly how everything is going to flow because it's very important. You gotta put yourself in the mindset of the person that's gonna go to your show and you wanna walk in and basically experience the space the way that they would experience the space. As the artist that puts the show together, a lot of times our mind is like, well, I wanna show this off and I wanna do this and I wanna do that, but really you do have to put yourself in the mindset of the person visiting the space. Along with all of that, where you're planning out just the space itself, you're gonna to wanna to plan how you're gonna get the artwork there, um, when you're gonna hang the artwork, basically the whole nine yards. Who do you have to talk to to get keys if it's a space that you're leasing? The other thing you're gonna have to figure out is do you need insurance? How does that all work? Is there an alarm code? You want to think about it all. And if there are repairs, is that gonna discount the space? A lot of times building owners will just let an artist set up a solo show. That's why it never hurts to ask. 
but they will require the artist to make at least a few repairs. Yeah, and you should probably have a plan for like after the show too, like if you need to make any repairs from the hanging of the artwork or anything like that. Yes, yeah, uh, because, w well, one of the things you want to do is when you look at the space is like, how am I going to hang the artwork? How? You got you do have to figure how, how, how I, am I how going am I? to? How? The other thing that you're going to want to figure out is sales. How exactly are sales going to work? Do you have a square reader or some kind of device to be able to take credit cards do you have cash on hand in case you got to do transactions a lot of times the artwork is going to be very expensive so in those cases like make sure that you have some kind of card reader that you could swipe a transaction usually when you're the one in charge you're the one doing all the sales so like there's no commission split there you get all the sales because you're the one that's putting the show together basically you are paying for the space you are putting a show together there's no commission split. Some artists have contacted me saying that they rented a space and that the person in the space said to, that they had to split commission on the sales of their stuff. And I'm like, mm, no, if you're splitting commissions then that person shouldn't be charging you rent. That's just my thought. Along with sales and stuff. And for example, like with us, we're doing the live streaming. You're gonna wanna check the internet into space. And for example, the space that we have right now, uh, just doesn't have any internet. It's a big old stone building. So like the cell signal doesn't get in there. And we promised that we were gonna do live streams. One of the things that we're looking at now is a cell extender or booster or something that we could put into window because there is two bars in the window. So we need more. Um, yeah, so we're still figuring that part out, but you do definitely want to check and make sure that the internet is working or that there is some kind of cell reception so that you could swipe cards. Yes, in our case, we do need more bars in the window, just, you know, the internet kind oh of bars. The other thing I think about is mini events. For example, we have this space for about a month, so we're going to be there every week. What exactly are we going to do? Are we going to do live painting? Are we going to do this? What is going to happen during the reception? You want to think about all of that stuff. You want to plan ahead. Not to say that your plans will always go according to plan, but you do want to plan ahead just so that you have an idea of what it is that you're going to do. Most importantly, remember that if you're going to be there for several hours, chances are it's not always going to be busy. So you want to do something that's going to keep you entertained while you're waiting for people to come and enjoy your show. What am I going to do? I just want to dance. What are you going to do? I... The other thing I would do personally is have some kind of reveal, some kind of thing that for the reception that nobody has ever seen from you before or something weird and fun, just something that is different. For example, in ours, we have a small back room that is part of the gallery and that's where we're gonna put in a glow in the dark section where you could go in and turn the lights on and off and be able to see um, all the cool glow in the dark pieces that both Glee and I are working on. The other thing you wanna think about is for the reception, you wanna think about food and drinks. What kind of drinks are you allowed to have in your state? These are things that you're gonna to wanna to look at. You're gonna to wanna to talk to people about what the laws are as far as alcohol is concerned. And as far as food, what I suggest is like, just finger foods. Listen, there's nothing wrong with pretzels and cheese. For our event, there's gonna be hummus cups, uh, some meat and cheese rolls and some vegetarian options and different things like that. I always try to keep things in mind, like have something for everyone, but I wouldn't stress too much about the food at the event. Now, one of the things that you could also do, depending on the theme of your event, is that you could choose finger foods that work with the theme of your event. Like glow in the dark foods, huh? What? Yeah, or a random retrospective of foods. Oh. Foods we haven't done? No, just f foods. It's not, it's what? Ultimately, the food decisions are up to you. I always try to think of people that might have allergies and stuff like that, but I, I also like to have something for everyone. For the reception, honestly, the most important thing is the drinks. Like, what kind of drinks are there? If I'm being honest, that's usually what it's about. This honestly should be number one, is thinking about your budget. Like, what is your budget? Especially if you're putting the show together, and most importantly, being thrifty. For example, right now, we 
with this show in particular, um, we're still catching up financially from moving in and doing all the repairs and stuff. So we have to be extremely, extremely thrifty. In that case, what we're doing is looking at what, what can I build with materials that I have here? What kind of resources do they have at the gallery already? What can I borrow from someone? Basically, it's like, throw this show together in a way where you are not blowing your budget on fancy things because ultimately at the end of the day it's the artwork it's you it's whatever it is that you have at the show people are going to enjoy themselves as long as you are thinking about the person coming to the show and how their experience is going to be you want to give them something to remember you by. Or if you're gonna go with like quantity over quality for the drinks, just put a little sign there that says, I know, but we're on a budget. Yeah, or or just put a paper bag over the drinks and that way it's like, you don't know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Are you gonna get the good one or the not so good one? I mean, it's an art reception. Nobody expects good wine. At Beverage her. roulette could be exciting. <laughs> One of them is good and the other <laughs> is subpar. The other thing that I think about is in coming out to the show, I think about what kind of artwork I'm going to bring, right? So like I want to fill the space. I am a big filler up of wall space kind of person. I'm not a big fan of like gallery spaces where you have one painting here and then one painting there. And that works, that's fine. If you don't have a lot of artwork, you could definitely do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Because I have so much artwork, like I, I love just filling a space with artwork. And on top of that, we're gonna bring in sculptures, Klee's jewelry is gonna be there, we're gonna have the glow in the dark section. Yeah, we definitely don't do the thing where we're like, there will be one painting and no chairs because we will not ruin our aesthetic with things. Yeah, I don't get I don't get that minimalist aesthetic when it comes to art. I think of like the old days, you know, like the the Paris Soulon and how they had like hundreds of paintings hanging up. Every square like inch. Like that to me, I'm like, that's an art show. Yeah, I like that too. We're basically bringing in stuff that just covers every single price point so that it covers everybody's budget. Those are the kind of shows that I have. I'm not saying that that's right for everyone, but those are the kind of shows that I have because I always want anybody that comes into the space to be able to have some way, shape or form of supporting us and the event. Because for us, the plan is for them to have a really, really good time while they're there. I think because we focus on that and not so much the sales aspect of the show, people tend to have a lot more fun at our events. So they tend to wanna buy more stuff. Finally, I would say that the last thing is thinking about your timing and thinking about planning. Uh, basically, we have eight days till the show, so each and every single day is taken up by a different task so that we could be ready by the date of reception. We have the entire month planned out so that we know exactly what's going to happen and what needs to happen on those days. Eight days, yeah, we are definitely working eight days this week. It's true. And we also have the plan for pickup after the show. How are we gonna get the things home? How are we gonna get pieces to people that bought the artwork that maybe are not there? And whether or not shipping is going to happen and all those kind of things. So you wanna plan and think about all of it. And I think that that's it, you guys. At this point, like I said, we have eight days left. So these are the things that we're pretty much thinking about right now and getting all the things ready. So just so you know, we may not be posting any videos until after the reception happens because basically every, we, we're just, we are getting things ready. We're getting things ready. This show is going to be amazing. It's gonna be fun, but there's a lot of work involved. So yeah, I think that's it. Now, if I missed anything, and I'm sure that I missed things because my mind is kind of scattered right now, just go ahead and leave your suggestions in the comment section below. All right, so we're uh, gonna go and keep doing what we're doing. You yep. wanna say goodbye? Wait, no, you wanna say goodbye? <laughs> Good day, everyone. Mwah. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. And if you happen to be in Venango County on the 5th of August, our reception happens from 6 to 8 p.m. at Graffiti Gallery. We would love to see you. And yeah, that's it. I will talk to you later. Adios.